Well, today I thought I would bring you inside. I've been working outside quite a bit in the garden, but I thought you might be interested in seeing some of the things that I like to collect. And one of my favorite things right now that I'm collecting is colored glass. And I've been collecting it for quite a while since I was a little girl. When I was really tiny and small, I had a um, an old box like a little tin box full of colored glass that I would find around the neighborhood, little cobalt pieces, red ruby colored pieces, um, sea glass I would find on the beach and different things. And I would pretend that that was my jewelry box full of precious jewels. And so as I've grown up as a teenager, I started collecting art glass, mostly American pieces, but some European as well. And I just love color. I'm an artist. I went to art school and I've always been an artist as long as I can remember. So I especially love color. So glass is something that's really special because it's something that you can use. The light shines through it. The colors change in different lighting. And I just absolutely love using it around the house. I know some people like to keep their collections in a, in a fancy piece of furniture, a jewelry, not a jewelry, but a, like a china cabinet. But I actually have a rule that I like to use my pieces as decor, use them as flower vases and, and keep them in the rooms. And so that way I'm just surrounded by them. I think it gives them their own center stage where they don't have to compete with all the other pieces. So let me just show you the very first piece today. And this is the grand dame of my art glass collection. I thought I'd start with this first. This is a Fenton art glass, uh, vintage cranberry glass, and in, in the coin dot pattern, a Gone with the Wind lamp. And it has a glass hurricane on the inside. And this reminds me of my grandmother. She had a beautiful Southern home here in this town that I would love to have so much. Um, it was my great grandparents' home. They built it and she decorated in the old antebellum style and in the hallway and in some of the bedrooms, she had these Gone with the Wind lamps. And she was actually from the Gone with the Wind generation. So she would have seen that movie and probably admired Scarlett O'Hara and admired all the interiors. So as a teenager and young adult, we used to go on tours in, in um, Vicksburg and different towns, Natchez, Mississippi, and in, all over Louisiana. We would go on tours through the antebellum homes and she would look at the interior paint colors and the crystal chandeliers and things. And she would use that as inspiration to decorate her home with. And it was just absolutely beautiful. So this piece I bought in California where no one's really interested in antiques. They're interested in that sort of restoration hardware look or sort of in more of an Asian minimalist, low profile, modernist kind of. And, and then some of it is uh, that 1950s and atomic look. They just like sort of different things that are lean more toward modernist or contemporary whereas i've always loved antiques so this is here in my dining room uh, this is a little small bay window and i just love this piece i got it really cheap in california and i sometimes look on ebay and these are going for really high prices so i'm so glad i have it i'll never get rid of it and it doesn't have an outlet here so I need to have an electrician come and make me an outlet so that I can plug it in. I'm using a flicker bulb in it. It has both of the top and bottom work. And this is my first piece. So this is the pattern up close. This is why they call it coin dot. It looks like little quarter size. I don't know how they do that, but it's just beautiful. So like I said, the bottom lights up and the top lights up. And then it has a little hurricane um, glass fixture inside. And I just love this lamp. And then it has, I think these are brass. I'm not really sure. I'm afraid to polish it. 
because I don't want to take any finish off, but it's just so pretty and so elegant. And that's overlooking the little side garden, which is pretty dead because we're in winter right now, but I have it seated on a marble topped Victorian table. And this is, this is Barley's lookout. This is where he does all of the guarding. I call it the tower. And this is Louie's bed too. And we have an honorary dachshund in the window who's always on the lookout. So here is some of my colored glass collection and I just love it. I love every piece. I used to have a lot more, but I have had a lot of my things stolen um, that were in storage. So it's just really heartbreaking. But I've been collecting these since I was 19 years old and maybe even as a teenager younger. Um, having a nice cup of coffee on my spode today, pumpkin coffee, even though it's February, I still have some left in the freezer. So let's talk about the first piece. It's this piece here. Now, this is another thing to honor my grandmother. This is not hers. I really don't have anything that belong that actually belonged to her, but I'm so sentimental that I like to, when I find things that she had, I like to try to buy them. This is a beautiful bohemian glass pitcher and it's cranberry cut through clear. And it has sort of little German castle on it and just beautiful little scenes. And I think it might, you, you can correct me if you know about it in the comments section, but I think that it comes from Bavaria originally. And I actually, I like to have pieces that I use. I don't, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with doing this, but I personally don't like to keep my collection of things all in a cabinet in one place because that looks a little bit dated to me and I enjoy using them. That's another thing my grandmother always told me. Don't just keep the special thing or the special suit you bought or the special whatever. You use it because someday you die and then your things all go to someone else, right? So I feel like you should really enjoy the, the finer things that you have. And if they make you happy, have them around. So I use this pitcher all the time here in the dining room and I put my water in here or I put, I, I like to make a fresh lemonade um, without sugar. I use stevia. And so this is what I serve it in and it makes me feel really special and elegant. And I just hope I don't break it, but <laughs> if I do, that's okay too, right? Um, that's part of the deal of using expensive things that are fine. So this is so pretty. I just love this color and I think it goes nicely in the green the green dining room. Okay, let me show you the next piece. And here's the next piece that I have. And this is something that I keep in my kitchen. Um, this is new, it's not old, but it has that old Fire King green depression glass look that I just love. That's, I think it's very American. And you've seen tons of chickens on nesting baskets around. I also have one in the dark red and um, I keep my tea bags inside usually because I drink tea every morning and I just love using this. I have in the past kept stevia in here and use that as a really big sugar bowl. So you can just keep whatever you like or just have it out sitting on the counter and it's so cute. But I love it. It looks old but it's new. I bought this at a Cracker Barrel uh, gift shop so it was really inexpensive. Knowing me, I probably got it on sale. I usually try to shop really cheaply. Um, so that's my next piece. Now the rest of my pieces I'm gonna show you are all from Fenton Art Glass. I just love Fenton Art Glass and they're not, no longer in business, which makes me really sad. I first started collecting them in the, probably the 80s, the late 80s when I was in high school and I would order pieces on QVC. They used to have the owner, Bill Fenton, on there. And it might sound silly to you, but I just love it. You know, and I know a lot of people love collecting, you know, fine crystal, Waterford or Baccarat, 
but I'm still that little girl with a shoebox full of colored glass and I still, it makes me so happy seeing colored pieces. So this is the first piece we'll talk about. It's a little tiny posy vase and it is called Burmese glass. And I have no idea how they get the lattice work pattern, but that's glass, that's not painted on. And then it's hand painted in these little pretty little roses and it has this sort of pink, like a lamb's tongue top, little crimp top. And I just think it's so cute. And I'm keeping this upstairs in the guest bedroom because if if I have a friend that comes to stay with me, I like to put fresh flowers in her bedroom and just make her feel really special. And I think it's actually signed on the bottom. It is, let's see, hand painted and the name of the artist and then Bill Fenton on, on, on the bottom. So my grandmother had a hurricane lamp in this pattern and I actually have it upstairs. It's the one thing that I was able to inherit from her and it is in the same bedroom and I just love it. I think eventually I'm gonna move it to the hallway upstairs. It just has such a cozy look when it's lit. So the next piece is, I'm not really sure what kind of glass this is, but it's a frosted glass. And it might be hard to show on video, but it has, it looks like cherry blossom flowers and branches and a big beautiful peacock sitting in it, in the branches. And it has a scalloped edge. And this one I bought, I think for $10 in my, one of the local flea markets here. And it still has the old style Fenton tag inside. And I keep silk flowers in this one. And this one is going to be in the chinoiserie bedroom that I'm designing upstairs. The before video is in my videos, you can see it. I tried to shoot all of my videos before, before the work's being done so that once the work's done, you can go back and see what we started with and and how you can totally change your, your rooms with some decor. So I hope you'll enjoy that. But I keep little white silk flowers in this one. This bedroom is going to be kind of greens and blues and, and whites, I think. So this is actually the, the fabric for the curtains that I bought um, at a Tuesday morning before they went out of business. And I love it. It has little bits of green and blue and sort of more of a turquoisey blue. And it's sort of an Indian pattern. So it has waves and these old Indian patterns. So this is going to be in the same room. And this is actually the color that I've painted the French bed. Now the next piece I want to show you is something I just got. I just got this on eBay. I'm actually a little disappointed with it because I thought it was going to be bigger. There's another one just like it that's nine inches tall. And this looks quite a bit smaller to me. But this is American Hobnail. And it, it's, it's a blue opalescent glass with the white milk glass in it. And American Hobnail is a very American pattern. You saw it a lot in the 20s and 30s in glassware and pitchers and all sorts of objects, mostly to be used on the table. But this I bought for the same bedroom to keep flowers in. I think that it goes really well with the fabric. Don't you think so? I think it'll be great. Now, this is the next piece we're gonna talk about. I keep this in the Berry bedroom upstairs it's a dark brown bedroom. I'll show it to you in place. But it's a yellow opalescent glass with white milk glass that's also opalescent on the inside. And it has a clear glass, yellow glass handle twisted. And it has sweet little, little violets on it. And I always had African violets growing in my bedroom next to my bed. So I just, I try to buy pieces that mean something to me and not feel the need to have every single piece of Fenton because it can get to be too much. So it's hard though, because I look on eBay late at night and I want absolutely most, almost everything. But I try to get pieces that I will use and that I decorate with that belong to a room. 
and that means something to me. So this means something to me because of the violets. So I'm going to show this to you later. Um, the little violets go all the way around and I just love the, the twisted handles that Fenton does or used to do. And this piece is signed as well. It's hard to see Bill Fenton and then the artist. I love this piece. And this is the next piece I want to show you. This is a sweet little fairy light. And this, you put your little candle inside. Oops, is this upside down? There we go. Little candle. I would recommend using battery operated ones instead of the wax. I mean, you can use the wax, but the battery operated ones just won't damage your piece. But it has that same sort of lattice work. It's, it's a light blue opalescent glass with some of the milk glass inside. And that's the pattern. I have no idea how they do it. Um, let me show you the, the bottom piece. It is a sweet little basket from a mold. And this piece I don't think is, yeah, it just has the Fenton stamp. Um, but I love the little opalescent. So this is going to be in the blue boudoir. And that video is in my videos, the before. And it's something that I'm working on now. That's also the room I got injured really bad in last August. So I need to get back to it. I have a little bit of a fear to get back to it. But uh, anyway, this is going to go by the bedside at night. And it has little flowers painted around. I'm surprised the artist didn't sign this one. But I just think that's a really sweet little piece. It's a fairy light. I love it. This is the final piece that I have to show you today. I think it might be my favorite. I feel like they're all my favorites for different reasons. This is all my little jewel box of colors. But this piece is something that I bought in the early 90s. Um, also from QVC. It, the, the owner, Bill Fenton, used to go on QVC a lot, and I would just love watching the shows. I wanted everything, so I'd let myself kind of get one piece per, t per season. And this is a beautiful kind of a, a picture, almost a, I don't know, like a, almost like a cruet. But the glass is a pink, sort of a salmon pink color. I'm not sure what the proper name of the color is. Um, it has the clear green and it does have an opalescence to it and there's also some milk milk glass um, in diagonal stripes that swirls around the pitcher and at the top it looks more milky and I just love that. You can really see some of the opalescence and the color shining, the pinks and the greens and the orange and yellow. It's just lovely. And then this is just straight green without opalescence to it. And I love how the glass blower will attach the handle, just attach, start from the top and they pull it and then it stick it down here and it creates this sort of starburst sun pattern from the crimping. And then the top is kind of ruffled and crimped and edged in the green opalescence. And I just think it's beautiful. Now the art on this is just lovely. Look at the little sweet little butterfly. And then it has, I'm not sure if these are hibiscus or are they some kind of a lily, but I don't, I don't know. They, they could be kind of a lily. And then this looks like little berry pattern, little vining that goes all the way around the piece. And I love how the stripes get tighter around the neck and flares up to the top. Oh, I just love this piece. Now on the bottom of the piece, look, I left a sticker and that's rare for me. I almost always took stickers off of things. So I'm glad I left it there so you can see it, but that has the artist's name and then Bill Fenton's name at the top. So this is my final piece. I'm keeping this piece in the guest bedroom for now, but none of the rooms are finished. So in future videos, if you'll just please like and subscribe as I'm working on the bedrooms. The exciting part is going to be at the end with the decorating and the finishing and you'll see these pieces appear in the rooms. But I'm going to show you one thing. And finally, I just wanted to show you one of my Fenton art glass pieces 
as de decor in the berry bedroom. So here it is. It's sitting on a wood pedestal table next to an antique French chair and with a nice lamp and a picture of some birds. And here are some pictures. That's actually me. Look who that is. That's me and my dad. That's my dad when he was little. And that's my dog who's in heaven now, Bo, a short hair dachshund. And this is a wonderful piece of pottery that my friend, who's a famous pottery artist, um, he gave that to me. It's all grasses and things. But I've painted this bedroom in this dark, beautiful, chocolatey, kind of a cool brown color. And I've painted the stencil myself to look like a beautiful wallpaper. This is my arts and crafts bedroom. So this is sort of an English inspired bedroom and I'm going to show it to you in a future video, but I just wanted to show you how you can mix and match. You know, you can use your, your glass. You don't have to keep it in a cabinet hidden away. So here's this beautiful little violet piece. And I just think that having some different colors just livens up the room. So this is the berry bedroom and we'll see this in a future video. So I hope you enjoyed the tour of my art glass collection today. And if it's something that interests you and you'd like to see more of the things that I like and collect around the house, then just let me know in the comments section and please like and subscribe. I do all sorts of videos uh, about my home that I'm taking sort of a new house and turning it to look like an old Victorian house and I'm doing it all myself. I'm also landscaping the garden and growing fruit trees in the vegetable garden, and I have animals that I rescue. So please like and subscribe and come along with me while I work on everything. Bye, see you next time, bye.